Hi, this is Mark Evanstein with music.py. And today I'm gonna to tell you about the big, new, exciting feature that I've added to Scamp, my suite for computer-assisted music in Python. It's part of the latest release, Scamp 0.9, and it's gonna blow you away. Before we get to that big, new, exciting thing that you're definitely gonna to wanna to listen to the whole video to get to, I'm gonna string you along for a few minutes showing you all the other neat features that I've added to this new version of Scamp. A lot of these new features have to do with notation, so I'm gonna start with a script that just plays a few notes, just a quarter note, some triplets, and a half note chord, and uh, we're gonna transcribe it and generate the lily pond notation. So beforehand you have to say session.start transcribing, then you have to ask the session to stop transcribing. That generates a performance object, and you ask that performance object to create a score and to show that score. That's gonna look and sound like this. And there's the score. So one cool new feature that I've added is that sometimes I find myself composing and I realize at some point that I really wish that all of the note values were like half as long or twice as long, that maybe this were a uh, quarter note equals 180 and that these were all double the length. Well, I've added this new feature. Uh, all you have to do is say performance.remap to tempo and give it the new tempo. So I'm gonna say remap to tempo 180 and here we go. There you go. By the way, those of you who use Scamp will know that uh, you can do accelerations and decelerations, and when you remap to the tempo, this can actually be a continuously changing tempo curve. Anyway, that's super useful, but it's not the big thing that I wanted to show you, nor is this little feature that I'm about to show you. So some of you may know that we can change the way that notes are spelled in Scamp by doing something like this, key colon D flat. If I run it like this, then this chord is spelled using the accidentals you'd want to use in D flat major. Whereas if I say key colon B, it's gonna show up as all sharps because those are the accidentals you would want to use in B major. But what I've added now is you can actually specify accidentals specifically for each note. So even in a chord, you can say flat slash sharp slash flat, and that'll make the bottom note a flat, the middle note a sharp, and the top note a flat. Let's take a look. Flat, sharp, this is an F sharp from before, flat. I was actually forced to create this functionality because I was writing a piece for harp. And sometimes on the harp, you'll actually have D sharps and E flats commingling, and they're representing two different strings that are tuned differently. But again, that's pretty small potatoes compared with the big thing that I'm about to show you. Okay, but what is this big new thing that I've added that I've been teasing you with this entire video? Well, it's a revolutionary new foot fungus treatment that, just kidding, it's spanners. So spanners are things like slurs and brackets and pedal markings. For instance, if I want this whole thing to be slurred, I can have the first note say, start slur, and have the last note say, stop slur. And that creates notation that looks like this. By the way, we don't wanna to listen to this every single time. So I'm gonna say S dot fast forward in time 200. So it skips the playback. If on the other hand, you wanted to do a trill, you could say start trill, and you can say flat trill if you want to specify, and stop trill, and that creates this notation. Or if you want a dashed crescendo line, you can say start dashes crescendo, say stop dashes. Or maybe you want to indicate that the passage is sol ponticello. You can say start bracket, sol pont above and say stop bracket here and you'll get a bracket saying sol pont above the staff. If you want it to be dashed you can say dashed here and the bracket will become dashed. All of this works great except for a few things that are completely out of my control. So using the lily pond output unfortunately you can't have multiple brackets starting and stopping on the same note. This is actually kind of an unfortunate limitation of Lily Pond that I think they're trying to fix at some point. Another issue that you might run into is that if you try to show the music XML notation, it will generally work. But you might get some weird issues like dash brackets when you said solid brackets because the music XML import for the program that you're using, in my case MuseScore, isn't working properly. By the way, another big change under the hood is that I've started using the Arpeggio library for parsing these properties expressions like this. The Arpeggio library is going to make it easier to add features like this in the future, but at the cost of an extra dependency. 
Lastly, I've really updated the documentation for SCAMP. On the home page now, we have several learning resources, the Cadenze course, which you should all take because it helps support all of this work that I'm doing, the tutorial videos, and really importantly, an in-depth explanation of the note properties argument. So all of these spanners that we're adding, or anytime that you want to add dynamics or text or change the spelling of a note or put it in a different voice, all of that is finally explained here. So that's the big stuff that I've added to SCAMP 0.9. If it seems like a lot of work, it's because it was. And if you want to support that work, uh, check out my links in the description to my Patreon, my Libera Pay, and also take my Cadenze course. It's a really simple introduction to making music in Python, and it's not that expensive.